So the majority of videos out here focused on technology and cooling and all that when it comes to computers and laptops, they tend to almost always focus on the newest and greatest technology. And to be fair, I get it. I just built a new gaming computer and I was watching tons and tons of videos between Linus and Chase Two Cents and Gamers Nexus and everything, trying to figure out what the best thing is currently on the market. However, I know tons of people who are sitting at home with an old laptop or old gaming rig or old regular desktop computer trying to figure out if there's anything they could do to you know boost performance uh, and you know I'm the most I'm not the most tech savvy person that there is but I have my old laptop here um, which is actually my primary workhorse most of the time and it would, whenever I'm out and about or you know anytime that uh, I'm not able to get to my desktop computer. This is my go-to and it has been for the last roughly four and a half years. So uh, this is a ThinkPad X1 Yoga. It's the first generation. I got it back way in 2016, uh, which it, at that point had already been out a year, but I got a great discount on it around Black Friday. And I've used it consistently all throughout school during my uh, PhD program and anytime I would travel so it's been through hell and back again and when COVID began this is all that I had I didn't have my desktop computer and so I was using this every day I had plugged into the dual monitors back there and over time I just noticed that the performance was always decreasing it was running extremely hot uh, it was definitely throttling and so I you know uh, haven't been using it in a while but I just ordered a new AIO for my desktop and I had to order some thermal paste. So what I wanted to do was actually see, given that it's a few years old, if I replace the thermal paste on it, if that would actually have any uh, effect on the performance. It's an i7-6600U processor, which has a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz. Inside there's also uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 and a 512 gigabyte uh, solid state drive. So the first thing you wanna do in order to change the thermal paste is obviously flip over your laptop. And on mine, there are nine screws on the bottom. So take those out carefully and keep track of them. And once you have those out, you want to take off the back cover, use a guitar pick or something to pop it open if you need to. I recommend disconnecting the battery right away. Uh, pretty easy with a little pair of pliers. And then you need to work on unscrewing the heat sink. Uh, mine had four screws on it. And as you can see here, the thermal paste is pretty dried out, not evenly spread, kind of all over the place. And so, and there on the heat sink as well. And I recommend using some rubbing alcohol and a microfiber cloth to clean it off. Uh, remember to clean off the heat sink as well. Uh, and look at that. Now you want to take the thermal paste and apply it. I am using the Arctic MX4. And once you have that on, just reinstall everything in the order you took it out. All four screws on mine. Make sure you give it a little smush too to make sure the thermal paste spread evenly and make sure to reconnect your battery. Once that's done, put the back cover back onto your laptop pop it into place and put all the screws back in. And once you're done with that, go ahead and flip her back over and turn her on. So in order to test the impact that my new thermal paste has on the performance of my laptop, I ran Cinebench R23 and measured both the temperature, uh, the Cinebench score as well as the average frequency across the entire test. And given that this is an old, this is an older laptop, given that this is an older laptop, it took quite a while to run these tests. So there's probably better tests out there, but I decided I was just going to use one and just run with it because this is not the most thorough test ever. I just wanted to have some sort of benchmark. So the ambient temperature in the room was roughly 23.5 degrees Celsius. At one point it got up to 25 degrees Celsius because I was running this a little bit later in the day. I did not see any big difference though. And as you'll see by the scores, interestingly enough, it did have an effect despite the increase in 
uh, ambient temperature in the room. So let's look first at the temperature scores. With the original thermal paste, I hit an average of 78 degrees Celsius while running Cinebench. After the application of new thermal paste though, we see that the temperature dropped down roughly 4 degrees Celsius down to 74 degrees. And I consider that a pretty good reduction. And perhaps more importantly is the fact that 24% of the time while Cinebench was running with the original thermal paste, it was actually thermal throttling. However, after I applied the new thermal paste, it did not thermal throttle once during the entire benchmark test. On top of the reduction in average temperature while running Cinebench, Cinebench scores also improved after the application of new thermal paste. With the old thermal paste, I scored 1470, while after the uh, application of new thermal paste, the score jumped up to 1779. Looking at the average frequency across Cinebench, there was also a relatively significant increase so one thing I'd like to note is a couple weeks ago, I actually had gone through and opened up the laptop and cleaned out all the fans. And so I wouldn't attribute most of this to, you know, cleaning and all that. I actually see most of this improvement as a result of the thermal paste. So looking at these scores, I have to say I'm pretty satisfied with the results. A decrease of about four degrees in the average temperature while running Cinebench, as well as an overall increase in the Cinebench scores. On top of that, the idling temperature actually decreased from about 40 degrees Celsius to about 33 degrees Celsius while idle. That's pretty great. So, you know, if you happen to have an old laptop lying around and you hear the fans spinning up all the time and, you know, you're experiencing what might be thermal throttling, I recommend just spending a couple dollars picking up some thermal paste and spending, you know, 30 minutes to an hour opening it up and applying some new thermal paste and see if it has any effect. I can't guarantee it, but you know, it's well worth a shot. So if you do happen to do that, I'd love to know if it had any sort of effect in the comments and uh, thank you for watching.